Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more r slash you might a butthole. And if you love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, and let's crack on with today's stories. Much love, guys. Now, our first story comes from Recent Iron 4314 who asks, am I the arsehole for keeping an unedited wedding photo in my personal space and not having any sympathy when an upset mother-in-law? My husband and I have been married for five years and his mum is the bane of my existence. She is the death by a thousand cuts type and manages to be smug and condescending while playing it off as being dumb. I'm not feminine enough for her, her son doesn't make enough money, and I'm not the doting wife she envisioned. In short, we embarrass her. Mother-in-law is a huge girly girl, super vain, cares a lot about how she looks. She viewed my wedding as a little beauty pageant and acted like she was the one getting married. I gave her a lot of leeway because she was going through a divorce and lashing out. She broke down crying and had a rare genuine moment. And then I was just like, fuck it. You can have your too light, too sparkly dress. It's, it obviously means a lot to you. Anyway, the night before the wedding, her and father-in-law, her soon-to-be ex, got into a little fight at the rehearsal dinner and left to go duke it out in the hall. One thing led to another and father-in-law's girlfriend found them in bed together that night. She is a special kind of petty and went out and bought actual black ink like for a pen and doused them both in it while they slept to mark them as cheaters. But more so mother-in-law because you know sexism and it's always the woman's fault slash sarcasm. This stuff would not wash off. Half of her hair was dyed black while the other half was a very, very blonde. One cheek was black and it was awful. She spent all morning scrubbing but to no avail. She was freaking out and wanted to skip the wedding because she was so embarrassed. But my mum talked her down and my photographer promised that he could edit all the pictures to make her look normal. She ended up getting another dress last minute to draw less attention, I guess, and sulk the day of. But the photographer worked his magic and my pictures came out great. Also, mother-in-law and father-in-law are very happily back together. And at least father-in-law can laugh about that day. I did, however, ask him for a copy of the original because, come on, it's funny. I keep it on display in my bathroom, and when mother-in-law boundary stomps, I look at it. I pretty much forgot because it's been years and I stopped paying attention. I hosted my in-laws recently, and brother-in-law's toddler pissed all over my bathroom during a tantrum, and his mum was making him clean it. Cue massive screaming and crying, and that was going to take a while, so I told mother-in-law she could use the master bathroom because I am an idiot and I forgot. Mother-in-law came out pissed and demanded to know why I had that picture. I said it was my wedding picture and I can display it whenever I want. She began to throw a fit about how I hate her and I enjoy seeing her suffer and this is proof that I've always hated her. Father-in-law tried to calm her down and said it was objectively funny and he has a picture of her with the ink flipping him off in his home office. She said that was different because he loves her but I'm just a shitty person and it's different because I'm a woman. I had to text her today and she still seems a bit sulky. Now, I don't think mother-in-law is really wrong with this. From what it sounds like in this post, you do hate her. Hence why you have the picture in your bathroom like that. You pretty much admitted it yourself. But I am going to say a not the arsehole simply because, you know, it was your wedding. They're your photos. It was in your private bathroom. Although you did make the mistake of letting her go into there. I still don't think I'm going to go for an everyone sucks. I think I'm going to keep it with a not the arsehole in this situation. But Derpsicles18 says she's not wrong. But that also doesn't make you an arsehole when it's your wedding photo in a bathroom people don't usually have access to. Not the arsehole. Golden Hour Baby says not the arsehole. That's fucking hilarious. Mother-in-law choose to F around at your wedding. You have every right to want to remember your special day as it actually happened. If I were you, I'd move that pic to the downstairs bathroom. Great conversation starter for future guests. Oh, you says, actually, I'm laughing too hard to judge anyone. I must be going to hell for this. Banff says, everyone sucks here. Let's face it, your mother-in-law is correct. You do have the picture because you hate her. You did admit you enjoy looking at the picture when she makes you angry. It is petty and childish, but it sounds like it isn't entirely undeserved. 
From your post, it sounds like your mother-in-law hasn't done much on her end to try and repair the relationship either and has expected you to do all the heavy lifting. So some pettiness on your side can be expected. So yes, perhaps it is fine that you kept the picture for whatever reason. However, be honest why you did and understand that this day was probably inevitable from the day you put it up. Things like this tend to come out and there was no way it was going to end well when it did. On the other hand, she is never going to like you, so why let her reaction bother you? Ashes B77 says not the asshole. Reminder, if you were truly petty, you'd have an extra large print over the couch on your mantle for all to see. Now, what do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from a throwaway account. Am I the asshole for getting mad at my wife for not feeding our kids despite being sick? Five days ago, my brother called me to let me know we had a pretty bad storm coming. Asked me to drive up to help him patch up some stuff. He has livestock and didn't want to risk them getting injured. My wife says she and our two sons, four and six, would stay at home, not wanting to risk getting stuck during the storm. Three days ago, she called to let me know she and the boys were sick. I asked if she wanted me to come back early. My brother could have dealt with the rest on his own. She said no, and so I stayed. Storm hit pretty bad, and I didn't get home until last night. I got in, and my oldest, non-verbal autistic, was really clingy. I didn't think much of it. He's always like this when he's sick. Youngest was sleeping. This morning, he gets up and is clinging to me as well, which he doesn't usually do. Let's me know he's hungry, so I make breakfast and they both finish it. Oldest signs more and youngest agrees. At this point, I'm concerned. To get our oldest to eat is a struggle and it's worse when he's sick. I get them more as asked, but ask my youngest what's going on. He tells me mama is too sick. I ask about it and she confirms that she was too sick to make them food. So all they had mostly been living on was whatever the boy could grab for themselves. All of the lower cupboards are filled with little snacks, gummies, crisps, the like, which is all they had for three days. We were running low anyway, so who knows when the snacks ran out. We had none left, I checked. I got mad, told her she, she can't let our kids live on junk just because she doesn't want to get up and make food. She says she was too sick. I say she should have called for help. She has a sister less than 10 minutes away. Her parents are around the corner from us. My parents are 30 minutes in a car, but I know they would have driven down. There is absolutely no reason to let them go hungry. On top of the fact that I offered to come home and look after the boy so she could rest up. She's claiming I'm insensitive. I don't know how sick she's been, etc. Her older sister came over to help, but mainly to call me an abusive husband essentially saying that if I cared so much, I should have taken the boys to my brothers with me, which I was going to, but my wife literally asked to stay at home with them. Her parents are also siding with her, saying that a few days without set meals is hardly neglect. My parents are disgusted with her behavior, but have told me to let it rest until she and the boys are better. I don't know if I'm being irrational or not, but I feel if food was going amiss, what else was she neglecting? Their teeth brushing, our oldest isn't potty trained. Was she leaving him wet for hours on end? I get she's sick and wasn't thinking straight. I do feel a little bad as she does seem worse this afternoon. But my kids deserve better. Am I the asshole here? Edit, before I left, we had about six packets of crisp left, maybe 10 fruit gummy bags, a 12 pack of mini rolls and a six box of cereal bars. And then whatever snacks were at the back that we hadn't pulled out. All three were eating that stash, so safe to assume they ran out quickly. I am also a stay-at-home dad. This is the first time she's had the boys overnight by herself, which is why I was going to take them with me. She had this week pre-booked off work because our oldest birthdays was earlier this week and we were meant to be taking them to soft play in the zoo. She just booked the whole week off rather than the individual days. To the few people asking if she's autistic too because genetics and whatnot. While she may be autistic in her own regard, she didn't carry the babies, which may explain her being less attached than I and has no genetic relation to them. And I'm gonna come into this one with a not the arsehole. And I understand, you know, if people were sick, you know, you feel like crap, you don't wanna do anything. But when kids are involved and you're their mum, their guardian, whatever, they do have a priority. Obviously, they need to be fed, they need to be changed, they need to be looked after. And if you're unable to do that, then you have a backup plan for that. Like OP said in this story, their sister lived nearby, their parents were around the corner, calling the husband, saying how sick you are. If you're that sick and you can't 
feed your children, then you need to have a plan for that. You can't just let them go wild and and basically feed themselves on the crap that's in the bottom cupboard. But Obadicta says not the asshole. Parenting does not have sick leave. If she's really so sick she couldn't handle making her children food, she needs to let you know to come home or ask a friend or relative to help out. Leaving an autistic six-year-old and a four-year-old to fend for themselves is not acceptable. It's neglectful. Libelou says not the asshole your wife is. Feeding your kids is not negotiable, even when you're sick. She could have asked you to come home or her sister to come help, but her feeling bad took priority over that. Also, these statements from her family are worrying and quotes, essentially saying that if I cared that much, I should have taken the boys to my brothers with me. Then says, so expecting your wife to be responsible for her own children's well-being was too much of an ask. Shake my head and then quotes again saying, her parents are also siding with her, saying that a few days without set meals is hardly neglect. Then goes on to say, what the actual fuck? This is nowhere near okay. Basically, you've got a wife you can't trust to care for your kids or ensure they are cared for when it's not convenient for her. And in-laws that try to blame you for their daughter's or sister's neglect. I don't know how to advise you about this, except to say that leaving your kids alone with your wife or her family is no longer an option for you. Judicator Aldera says, absolutely not the asshole, but someone else is. Both wife and sister are totally off it. What the fuck? Stick to your guns and protect your kids. Janus is blue says not the asshole. She can't be blamed for being sick, but she can be blamed for not setting up some sort of support system so her kids don't starve. That might mean having a family member come over or maybe asking you to come home early. In any case, what she did was incredibly dangerous. What if her sickness got worse and she needed to go to hospital? What if one of the kids got hurt? Infinite Picture says, not the asshole. My husband is military and he was away training when our kids and I got the flu. It was miserable. I had no energy and got dizzy whenever I was standing for too long. But you better believe I was making sure my kids had food, they could stomach and I made sure they were taken care of first. Now, what is your thoughts on this story? What would you suggest if you was in this situation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from Barbara L3409 who asks, am I the asshole for supporting my boyfriend when he told my son, no lock till you're 18? I, female 39, have been with my boyfriend for four years. I have a bio son, 16 year old, as well as two stepkids, 11 and 13. My son has been complaining about his younger step siblings entering his room and taking his things constantly and without asking. I tried discussing this with the boys and my boyfriend punished the boys and told them to ask first before taking anything and return it if taken, but my son said they haven't listened and things went back to how they were. A few days ago, my son came downstairs saying his older stepbrother broke his controller and put it back and told him he returned it like his dad told him, but the controller was broken. I again went to my boyfriend with the issue and had my son sit and talk directly to him. My son asked him if he could just get a lock for his room to resolve this issue, but my boyfriend didn't welcome the idea and told him no because locks bring troubles to his house, but my son tried to convince him and assured him that he won't use the lock when he's home, but only when he's at school or working. My boyfriend still said no and told him, no lock till you're 18, period, no more discussion. Thing is, my son will be living with us because he decided to go to a community college and my boyfriend told him when he reaches 18, that's when he gets to get a lock and start paying rent and no one will bother him. My son begged me to say something since he couldn't take it anymore after his controller was broken, but I agreed with my boyfriend that as the owner of the house, he gets final say and no lock means no lock. However, the boys will be facing stricter punishments to enforce the no touching other stuff rule. But my son was having none of it and started yelling at me and my boyfriend, saying his stepbrothers will never respect his privacy and his stuff no matter how hard their punishment is, since they never learn and are stubborn and will always do what they want. He picked an argument with my boyfriend after my boyfriend said he'll pay for the controller. And then my son called me awful for siding with him and refusing to see the blatant injustice in this house and told us he's reconsidering staying with us after 18. He keeps saying I'm not on his side because if I was, I'd be encouraging him to set boundaries and protect his stuff. But he buys with his own money. I reminded him how much my boyfriend helped us. We lost our apartment to debts and my boyfriend took us in two years ago. We had nowhere to go and let him know he's doing his best to hold the boys accountable. I think the son was very respectable about this. He went to you multiple times to say, you know, they're going in the room, they're trashing the stuff and trying to find a solution for it. And you're not giving him a solution. You're pointing him in the direction of your boyfriend who's then telling him no 
even though Sun just wanted the lock on for when he's out of the house to protect his stuff, which is getting broken now. And I think the most hurtful thing in this situation is, you know, his own mother won't back him up and just keeps directing him to boyfriend. He's the power in the house. And you seem to have no say because he saved you two years ago when you had nowhere to go. And that's the end of it. This is life now. Great. And whenever I read stories like this, I always think, oh, there's going to be another post in the future, you know, when he does leave. And I imagine, I always imagine the person be coming back to these subreddits and saying, oh, am I the arsehole for not supporting my son when they needed me to? But Mysterious System says, you're the arsehole, your son's privacy is being invaded and you are choosing to pander to your boyfriend's ego rather than support your son. If your boyfriend won't agree to a lock, the alternative is that your son gets sole discretion to decide how to punish your boyfriend's brats when they invade his space or take his belongings without asking. No limits. Dora Diamond says, you're the asshole. Of course you are. There's a very simple solution to protect your son's belongings and you won't do it because... What exactly is the reason your husband won't allow him a lock? What suddenly changes when he's 18? I see you say, that's when he starts paying rent. That's a whole other issues. Does that mean he's only entitled to privacy and not have his belongings stolen or destroyed once he starts paying for it? Why won't you help your son? Why won't you protect him? Jay the Nerd Kid says, so to recap, your son's buying himself things with his own money, presumably from a job or birthday gifts or something. His stepbrothers repeatedly don't respect his stuff. Clearly just sitting the stepbrothers down and talking to them has been ineffective. Your boyfriend won't let your son have a lock on his door because he's under 18, even though he's clearly old enough and responsible enough to hold a job that allows him to buy his own things. One day, you're going to be back here asking why your son cut contact with you the moment he was able to. Here's a hint. It's because when he needed you to, you didn't stand up for him. Everything about your post screams that you care more about appeasing your boyfriend than protecting your son. Well done. Good news, the boyfriend may or may not stick around, but if this continues, your son definitely won't. Enjoy the consequences of your choices. You're the asshole. Shoddy Growth says, I think it's great what you're doing. You're preparing your son for the real world. You're teaching your son that no one will stand up for him. Even his own mother rather obeys her husband's commands than object for the sake of her son. Those things are great to know before entering the workforce. Also, people will destroy your stuff and there is nothing you can do about it. Even if you inform the local authorities, like your parents, your boss or the police, there is nothing they will do about it. Also, you're the arsehole. Ocapielli says you're the arsehole. Locks bring troubles. This tells you that boyfriend does not see this as troubles. Also, your dependence for having been rescued from homelessness is worrying. I understand why you're in this position, but you will lose your son. Weigh this very carefully. Now, what do you guys make of this one? What do you think's happening in this situation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from Lemonade552 who asks, am I the asshole for telling my housemate that I cannot follow one of her rules that she wants to start using from January? I've talked about this specific roommate in a former post. She is a clean freak and quite controlling. Because of her university work, she has to start waking up around 5 a.m. from January till March, and she has made a rule that no one is allowed to use the kitchen after 6.30 p.m. so she can sleep properly. I tried talking to her that on three weekdays, my lectures end at 7.15, but she said that I can buy food from the university and it should not be a problem. This is an issue to me because I cannot afford to buy meals from university. I told her that as someone who also pays for the house, I have a right to cook dinner for myself after I get back from a full day of lectures. I'll try to keep things as quiet as possible. I can't not use the kitchen after my lectures. You have to understand that. What if we had a house meeting with everyone this week? We could figure out together which would be the best timing for the kitchen not to be used. She stared at me for a while till she started yelling, how me and the others never do anything for her. She has to do everything herself, which is not true. I'm the one who caused the maintenance if there's a problem with the house, etc. She continued on saying how we aren't grateful for what she's done. She got up from the sofa and stormed off to her room, calling me names and how I'm selfish. The next morning, she was glaring at me, but as usual, I cleaned up after myself, tried to talk to her, but she wasn't having it. Before I left, I sat next to her at our kitchen table and said, whilst I understand that you need your sleep, you need to live with four other people. We all cannot change our daily schedules and all of us have to eat. Roommate number three has lectures till 8 p.m. I'm sure you'd want to eat after that, wouldn't you? I'm not being mean to you. I'm just trying to say that this is a bit unreasonable. 
I'd be open to not use the kitchen after 9 p.m. gladly, but you should talk to the others as well. It's not just your decision. Let's have that house meeting today, okay, so we can decide the best course of action, okay? I tried to have eye contact with her, but she kept looking outside the window. I sighed and took my laptop bag with me and went to my lectures. Just before I left through the door, I heard her mumble to herself how selfish we were all being, to which I replied loud and clear. Wanting to eat after six hours of lectures is not selfish and it's a bare necessity. Try to think about it. If you had to do what you want us to do, would you feel like you could do it? And then I left. I'm not usually the most upfront and confrontational person. I did not raise my voice at her or anything. I tried to be reasonable, but honestly, did not want for her to cry or feel bad about it even. I just felt like saying something about this because I couldn't live three months like that. So, am I the asshole? Absolutely not the asshole. I wouldn't want to have to be quiet after that sort of time. I, I can understand nine or maybe 10 o'clock, you know, kind of reasonable. Still on the edge though about that, but 6.30 or whatever it was, absolutely not the asshole to me that person's being incredibly selfish and not thinking about the others in the house at the same time it's not just about that one person and i think you handle it pretty responsibly by trying to call a meeting to discuss this matter but nut michelle says not the asshole you called her on her shit and were respectful about it you handled this just right nicely done do the pingu says not the asshole at all stand firm that you're paying for the apartment and are entitled to use the kitchen to prepare food after your class she can get a fan a white noise machine and earplugs 6 30 pm is far too early to be considered the start of quiet hours in any dorm or hotel or anything like that she needs to adapt ac 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 says not the asshole it's not reasonable for her to expect the kitchen to be off limits for 10 and a half hours a day she's entitled and expects everything to do what she wants instead of trying earplugs or white noise machine or a fan Green-eyed kitty cat says, not the arsehole, you handled yourself and the situation commendably when faced with a selfish and immature roommate. And if you do have that house meeting and everyone tells her she's being unreasonable, then she will probably cry that you're all ganging up on her. It's highly unlikely she will ever see herself and her demands the way everybody else does. Daddy Denizel says, not the arsehole, if she doesn't have to be up until 5. Why does everyone have to be quiet at 6.30? That's 10 and a half hours. I can see like 9.30, 10pm. 6.30 is just ridiculous. Now, what do you guys make of this one? What do you think about roommates' demands? Are they reasonable? Are they not? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And a huge thank you for spending your time with me today, getting involved in the channel, commenting, liking, all that good stuff really helps out the channel. And there's a playlist on your screen right now that will scroll through the videos for you if you want to watch more, of course. And it, again, it helps out the channel. <laughs> Hugely appreciate it. Thank you so much. Much love to you. Goodbye.